Hey everyone, welcome to Weld.com. I know you guys are still at home, staying healthy. We're still doing the Instagram request videos. Boston Rush 77 asked us how to weld thin gauge metal with MIG. So uh, today we're gonna be welding on this. We're gonna do a real job like we're doing. No coupons today, guys. All right, we're just gonna cut this rust repair out here and replace it with 18 gauge sheet metal. This is what the thickness this is. So that's what we're gonna do. Make sure you stick around to the end so we've got a bonus for you, all right? Definitely make sure you stick around. You gotta watch the whole video, all right? So that's what we're gonna do today. Strap in and let's go. First thing you wanna do is find the thickness of the metal. You wanna make sure you have it in stock. If you don't have it in stock and you did all that work of prepping all of that, you just wasted your, kind of wasted your time because you wanna do the job right then and there. So I go find a little spot where I could put a pair of calipers on or a little gauge checker for the sheet metal. So this comes out to be 18 gauge, it's like 49 thousandths. Uh, you don't want to go thick to thin. So we got the material, I got 18 gauge material. I laid it here somewhere. I don't even know. So that's the main thing is always try to match the thickness of the material, what you're working on, right? Second, we found the material. We're going to go and lay this out and identify where we have good solid metal at. So I usually take my little peening hammer, my body hammer, my dad gave me this a long time ago. So we see rust, we wanna first figure out, we don't wanna get in a rush or anything and say, oh, hey, I wanna do this whole area. All right, we don't wanna like, we wanna think where's the best at, take our time and not jump the gun and cut a big whole area out. So I'm gonna like start right here. I, I see there's rust here. So I'm gonna tap around here. And if my hammer goes through, like right here, see how that hole's getting bigger? Yeah, we know that's junk, that rust. You can't weld rust. There's not, no carbon in it. So we know that's bad. So we're going to just come over here. This basically helps us find sound, good sound metal. So we're just going to come over here. So that's a good spot. So I mark it right here. All right, so I'll mark it a little bit lower because I want to cut in a straight line. Right here. I'm going to come over here. This is all right. You're going to mark a spot here. All right, this is all bad. See how that's bad? That's what we want to get rid of. All right, so. I'm gonna bring my mark a little bit further down because I want to cut it in a straight line. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this out and go uh, find good sound metal all the way around, all right? My first original thought is just showing you a small patch because this gas tank, this hood's pretty messed up. But uh, I want to show you 100% right, so I changed my mind, so I measured from here to here and basically did a whole good area, so that's what we're going to do. And these corners, I radius the corners around the corners is because when you do a square, you're welding the heat all into a little square of a corner. This, you actually round, you, the, the heat will go around. You know what I mean? You're not putting it all in one corner, so that will help the warpage so much. So that's how I do it, that's how I got taught and I'm just sharing my pointers to, with you guys. So I found good clean sound metal. I'm gonna take a cutoff wheel from a four and a half inch grinder. So I'm basically just going to st stick right here on my line, go all the way around. All right, then we're gonna take our pattern, I mean a piece of paper, stick it up behind it and trace it. So let's go ahead and do this. That's it, they're fast and simple. That's pretty nasty. Looks like someone tried to fix it before with some Bondo. Wasn't me, but yeah. Now I'm gonna clean up these edges here. I'm gonna ground them off with a little grinder uh, with like a hard, hard rock. I'm just gonna shape it off right here, make them a little better. So we're gonna clean the burr off the cut we made and clean up the metal on top about a half inch, inch back so we can weld. Then we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing inside. All right, when I was removing this with the die grinder here, removing the Bondo and paint, well, I found rust under the Bondo and paint. Well, the reason I know why it rusted now, 
because the Bondo got a bubble in it and the water went in there and it started holding water in there and it rusted. So we'll have to cut this down a little bit further. We want to get rid of that cancer. So we'll have to cut a little bit more here and cut more right here. I mean, that's how it goes. That's it. So we're going to go ahead and draw our line back out and cut it. So I want to make sure I get all the uh, rust. So I'm going to expand this into a big square from right here all the way across. All right. So we're going to go ahead and lay it out. All right, since we got this measured out, we're gonna go ahead and cut this out. All right, let's get to it. All right, finish with the top, we're gonna flip it over and clean up the back side. All right, next up, since we get all the rust off and the paint and Bondo off about an inch back, we're gonna basically take a yellow uh, envelope or yellow uh, folder here from Staples. I like to use this because it's I can flex with it and it's not thin or way too thick like cardboard. So we're just going to put it in here, lay it around there. I like it thin because it contours with the metal. And I'm just taking whatever magnets I found real quick. And I'm just going to put them on there like basically like four corners. So I really don't want it moved because we're going to trace it. We're going to basically put our pattern onto this. We're just going to trace out our cutout. Oh, magnet got me down. <laughs> That mag is pretty strong. We're going to cut this out. You want to make this piece a little bit bigger. You want to come outside your black lines just a little bit. And then uh, we're going to transfer this pattern over there on your 18 gauge metal, all right? So I really don't know which way this goes now. So you should have done this before you took the, uh, the template off. You basically should have went like this and marked it so you know where to put it back. Basically a locating mark or marking mark, all right? Don't ask me. So what we're going to do now, guys, all right? We're going to lay this down here, trace around it, and we're going to cut it out, and that's going to be our metal template to go in there, our patch panel, basically, or a patch. And we're going to spot it in, and that's it. It's cut big on purpose. We basically want to grinder and get her fitted in perfect where we're doing a butt joint all right so we're basically just going to round these corners right here and take the burrs off then we're going to just kind of keep fitting her in there until it fits in perfect so the prep work's done we're using a esaw rebel 205 I'm using the type of wire is ER70S-6. I'm using 025. I'm using small wire because I don't want to blow through and run a lot of volts and, volts and wire feed speed. I'll have a lot of amps uh, because the thickness of my metal is really thin. So we got to stay at least matched, match the thickness of it. I'm running 7525. I'm running like 20 CFH because I'm running a small nozzle. I'm running 211 on my wire feed speed and I'm running 16.1 on my bolts. We're going to go ahead and weld this. All right, so I put a magnet under here 
kind of help me hold. So then I'm going to kind of press this down and flush it out. I like to leave a gap because I want I want to connect these two and make sure I get penetration because I'm going to basically grind these welds away. All right, so I'm just going to tack it up first. And we're just going to tack every couple couple inches until we get the whole metal formed around there. Before you start tacking, you always should tune your machine on, on a piece of scrap metal. Basically the same thickness. So you always want to do that. And another thing is, see that ball, how it gets thicker? The ball actually gets thicker, so I usually cut that ball off and it gives me an easier start too, all right? Because we're not burning that thick part. We have to heat that thick part up and that's more heat into that metal. You wanna always keep your fit up, try to get your fit up tight. When it's a bigger fit up, it's gonna be hard to weld. So we're gonna kinda of get this flushed out and then we're gonna pull the trigger. That's it, we're just tacking her, we're not welding her. We're trying to put the panel in. We're just gonna work ourselves down. So I'm going to come about right here and we're just going to tack. You notice there I blew through so it's called a bridge. I put a little bit on the left side and I put a little bit on the right side. I made sure I let it cool for a second. And then I just kind of moved my, uh, moved my gun back a little bit and connected it. Then I want to get off of it really quick. The main thing is keep it flush. And uh, th this hammer, like if we get it high, we're going to tap it down and make it flush with the hammer or with this body hammer. So I'm just going to tack like an inch up. Move up another inch. Feels good. That's a little, that's a little uh, uneven. So you just either take this, get, try to get it even best as you can. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this. When I get down to the bend, we're gonna go ahead and focus on that and I'll show you guys how we're gonna do that. All right, we got the flats all done right here. So I'm basically gonna form it with this. You wanna keep your hammer flat. You don't wanna put indentions in your body to work or it's gonna be more uh, filler you gotta use and more, more work you gotta fix. So I basically just start tapping it and do small little tacks. Don't be in a hurry. Just don't do an inch or far apart tacks, do little, all right? Then I kinda of jump on both sides, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and do that. If you're not good at bridging tacks, get a piece of copper and put it behind, behind it and make sure it's flush up against the back of the metal. And you basically just tack, just move it back and forth and tack. Basically, you won't stick to this because it's a different type of metal. The next steps we got to do is basically we're going to tack weld this like every inch. We're not going to weld it because if we weld it, all, like run like an inch of stringer, we'll twist it. We don't want that sheet metal to twist all up because it's thin, it's really thin. So we wanna keep less amount of heat as possible in there. We're gonna tack weld over here, tack weld over here, but about an inch, just triggering it, pulsing it, and come over here. And if, if once it gets hot, walk away or use an air blower and do that. I, I don't use water, some people use water. I just take an air blower and just blow it. And until I feel my, put, I could put my hand on there and then it's good, then I'll start back up. And uh, we're going, that's about it guys. We're gonna get to it. That's it, let me throw my hood on. And always work off your tacks when, once you get everything tacked up. Work off your tacks because it's thick. And just move back like an inch and jump over here on this panel, and jump over here. All right, I'm all done on the wrap around here. So my corner is not as flush as I want to be. So I'm gonna use this copper block here 
and I'm just going to shove it right up in here. You'll see it pop through. And I'm just going to just wiggle it over. It's, it's okay if your, uh, your puddle hits that metal. It's not going to hurt anything, all right? So we're going to go ahead and do this. I'll show you right here. So I just come over here. You can rest the cup. It's fine resting the cup. And I just do a little wiggle back and forth, triggering it. All right, here we go. I just trigger it just like that. Move back over on the other piece of metal. I just move back on the other side. You just That's why they call it bridging. You're moving back and forth. And then you just create a bridge. All right, it's all welded out. It's, this is not your typical structural or x-ray weld. All this is doing, you're putting a patch panel in and it's holding, all right? So don't get discouraged if the weld don't look pretty as like a 7018 structural weld or anything. All right, so before we grind this all out, there's a low spot. The reason I got a low spot is there's two reasons. A little bit of heat right here. And the main reason is there's this hole right here for the radiator cap, because you gotta have access to it. And that, be that became a weak point because there's a hole right here, no metal. So we're gonna beat, beat that up, up into the high. If we use it, leave it low, we're gonna grind, in, grind into our base metal and we're gonna take our base metal, our original metal, make it thin. We don't wanna make it thin, all right? Then basically I use a 36 grit. I take my high of my weld. I bring it all the way down to right where it's gonna to almost touch, not touch, but almost touch the base metal. Then I switch over to something finer like an 80 grit, because this will help the body guy and you don't have to take them 80 grits out. I mean, them 36 grit scratches. So I switch over to a flap wheel, like an 80 grit, and I just basically blend it all back in. All right, that's about it. So we're gonna go, go ahead and get to this. Normally I, I have a body, body dolly, so I can shape this and use the flat part and work the edge of the dolly. That's what I'll make do right now. I mean, it's nothing critical. have to we can work more out at the end our main goal is not take this base metal down thinner all right. so we got the 36 we use the 36 grit we're done we brought the highs down we're going to switch over to 80 grit All right, we got this all blended in. It looks, looks real good. We'll send it over to the body man or uh, we can fix it ourselves. Um, don't be discouraged if you don't get it the first time. Just keep trying, all right? It's okay if you mess this up. I mess it up before lots of times. Uh, learning is key. Uh, I hope everyone stays safe, stay healthy. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned something. All right, see you next time. All right, guys, I told you I had another surprise from Instagram. Uh, Papa Means asked us to show his uh, welds on it on our channel so hey we tried we even clicked on him asked him to follow us or we follow him hey i'm sorry bro come on we want to show your welds bro